Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you this morning? It's a misty morning in East Kent. And I've got up this morning, I've just realised, I've got up this morning completely on autopilot. Completely. Out of bed, in the shower, ate my breakfast, fed the goldfish. Just not even, just completely not even thought about what I'm doing. Same movements, arm movements, leg movements I make every morning. Let's get a bit of warm air on this windshield. There we go. So I hope you're well. I hope everything's fine, going well. I uh, <laughs> just a series of funny things happened to me yesterday, and I won't go into all of them, but basically uh, the sort of the only one that sort of might be of any interest to any of you, because I know you're you're uh, you all you know have your own funny incidents. It's just a job that is just chock a block full of weirdness, you know. But um, just put my old headlights on because it's very misty. But uh, it concerns a former associate of mine, who uh, former actually a former owner of the practice who became an associate of mine, and uh, has retired. He's in his seventies, and it was about time that he, you know he wanted to complete 40, 50 years in the practice, in the business, but he, he didn't quite get there. I think got a forty-eight or something. But you know, we parted by. We parted really because uh, uh, when he owned the practice, and I, I have mentioned this before, uh, when he, he used to own the practice, if anything went wrong, he used to put it right, and he came out of his own pocket, and he didn't really care. But then when I bought the practice, it started coming out of my pocket. All these free adjustments, free visits, etc., 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 and uh, so I just. You know, I started charging him for the surgery time, and and then he ended up making either making no money or making a loss, and so and that was really just underscored the fact that he wasn't really very clinically very active anymore. So um, anyway, I got a phone call from a patient, and uh, obviously a disgruntled patient. You know, so I'm not going to pretend that it's anything other than a disgruntled patient just trying to create a bit of trouble but this patient said oh you know do you know if uh, Mr. So-and-so is still alive and I said well he is as far as I know you know I haven't had any contact with him six months but nobody's told me he's died oh I said do you know how to contact him I said well he he's moved abroad well uh, do you know the general dental council are trying to get in touch with him I said, no, oh really, you know. And, uh, yeah, they're, um, you know, so we're just trying to find out if there's a way that we can get in touch with him. And I said, well, they said he's, he's not, his address is not a secret to those who know. I think the GDC has got his address well, abroad where he's living. And, uh, you know, that, they can get in touch with him. Oh, oh, the GDC says they can't get in touch with him. I mean, this is a guy who's in his mid-70s, so I mean, he's not really that interested in chatting with the GDC, I would imagine, with a view to getting him removed from the register where he's no longer going to practice. I mean, it reminds me of a, a case once where they went through a full three-day hearing that resulted in a dentist being struck off, who was, uh, or removed from the register, as they say, who, um, who you know, who'd, who'd left the register, was, was retired and had no intention of ever touching a tooth again and yet they spent £30,000 on on removing him from the register. Well, you know, I, I said to me, I'm ever helpful. I am ever helpful, right? And this is my, this is my I am problem to a fault. I am helpful, even to people who are being rude to me and who don't really want to be helped. Uh, I mean, I'll give you another example. I'll come back to this guy. Another example, a guy rang a couple of days ago, oh, severe tooth, severe tooth, very bad. And you know, I could tell over the phone, he was in a lot of pain, so I felt a lot of sympathy for him, and I said to him, look, you know, I'm sorry, he's not a patient of mine, no, no. Uh, you know, typical, 
it thought he could just put off the dentist for the rest of his life, but then pain intervened, you know, to prove him wrong. And um, can I come? You know, can I come in today as an emergency? I'm sorry, we have no availability today. And we didn't. We were close for training. The surgery was shut. We had no start. But but even then, you know, I will um, I will um, reopen the surgery for people who are in severe. I very rarely turn anyone away who's in severe pain. And the only circumstances under which I'll do it is when I know very well that there are other there are alternative sources of relief for this guy. So I said to this guy, you know, there's a surgery up the road in Sainsbury's. Give them a ring. They're open all day. In fact, I think they open till eight o'clock in the evening or something, and then they'll, um, you know, I'm sure they'll be able to. If you tell them that you want to be seen privately and it's an emergency appointment, they'll they'll see you. I said, failing that, there's a, a service called Dentaline, which runs every evening from six o'clock. It's an NHS uh, service, and uh, all you do have to do is ring after six o'clock and go along, and uh, they will see you on the NHS. It's what happened when they stopped paying dentists out of hours fees for reopening the surgery in Kent. They decided to put that budget that they'd saved from paying dentists to see their patients individually into a collective service. Typical sort of collectivist nonsense um, and immediately turned into a multi-million pound business seeing patients in the evening doing temporary fillings. But anyway, that's the other thing you can go to Dentaline. So, so, uh, so this bloke says, so well, not even if, you know, even with private money, I can't be seen if I can't, because this is obviously a guy who's like, who's got an NHS dentist or had an NHS dentist and been thrown out for non-attendance or whatever. And, uh, I mean, that, that in itself is amazing, isn't it? I mean, if you think about it, we've gone from a service, uh, how many <laughs> services? How many service providers in the UK go out of their way to throw patients out? How, you know, to throw customers away, to tell customers that they've been banned, barred, and could never come back. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you get thrown out of a pub, you know, or barred from a pub or a shop or something, it's because you've been drunk, you've done some damage, or you've done shoplifting or something, and so you get barred. But not you get we. The NHS dentists go out their way to bar people. We've turned from a service that used to want patients and attract patients and try and advertise for patients to a service where patients are coming into my practice and saying, I missed one appointment, so they threw me out. I missed one appointment, so they threw me out, you know? And this is perhaps despite the fact that they've spent a week trying to ring and get through and saying that they couldn't come in for that appointment because they've got cancer therapy or something on that date. They can't come in and so they then they can't get through so they miss the appointment and they get thrown out and it's the same in secondary care you know you're you're referred for treatment of cancer and you miss one appointment and then they refer you back to your gp as though as though that's you know your cancer suddenly been cured so anyway this guy this guy is obviously an nhs patient and he's like uh you know, but he thinks, well, I'll pay privately. I'll have to pay privately. I don't get stick it on my credit card, whatever. But the the, the, the private sector there is a, is a safety net for the NHS, which is it is. I suppose if you've got the money and you want to, you finally decide you want to get things done properly, then you can go into the private sector. And they, we can't undo the damage that's been done. I mean, if you've had half your teeth pulled out, which I literally had a patient in the other day who had literally had half her teeth pulled out on one side then uh, there's not much we can do but you know you, you can sometimes sort things out in the private sector that you can't get sorted out in the, in the on the NHS so there he was thinking you know well I've got I've got money I'll ring up a private dentist I'll treat myself you know <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll book myself in I'll jump the queue and then and then of course he's furious to find out that we were shut the very day we needed him. You know, he'd been waiting 25 years to ring up a private dentist and say, I'm gonna come in privately. I'm a private patient, don't you know? And uh, and we're shut and we can't see him. Someone else can, but we can't. So, and so he said to me, what, like even with private money, 
can I, I can't come in you know even if I offer to pay whatever you ask me to pay I you know if I offer to pay that can I not come in so I had to say to him look it's not it's nothing about that it's not about the money it's about the fact that uh, we haven't got any availability but I've given you two alternatives so that's the best I can do you know at which point he just hang up he just hung up which you know which annoys me because it annoys me when people hang up it's the ultimate insult it's like you're, you're not worth even the courtesy of okay thanks very much goodbye you know it's like you have totally failed me <laughs> you're dismissed I'm not talking to you anymore which is fine I mean if they they want to burn their boats like that I won't ever see a patient again who's hung up on me if he, I don't care you know and this did happen recently with a patient of mine who um, who uh, you know made an appointment for an implant consultation and then and then rang and said that they didn't feel like coming in because they didn't feel very well and I said look I've got you know I've got a nurse and, and a receptionist sitting around here you know doing nothing because you've you've decided just not and it wasn't the fact that she wasn't coming in it was the fact that she hadn't even lifted a finger to to, to let us know Do you know there there are many many diseases that stop you coming into a dental surgery a simple a simple mouth ulcer can stop you coming into a dental surgery but there is no disease that stops you ringing up and saying that you can't come in yeah and it's honestly it doesn't make any difference to you either way because if you're going to get charged you're going to get charged whether you ring or not the only thing if you ring is you're likely you're less likely to get charged sorry about the sun it's that time of year when everything's really low in the sky and i've got to it's shining in my eyes all the way to work because i drive east and then shining in my eyes all the way back so no, so I won't see patients who've, who've hung up on me. Anyway, so this bloke hung up on me, and so I just sent him a texted him a message saying, "Please don't don't ring the surgery again," you know. So anyway, this guy is uh, talking to me about my former associate, and he said, uh, and I said to look at me, ever helpful. I said to him, look, don't worry. GDC can't get in touch with him they'll be able to get in touch with his indemnity association his indemnity association hasn't retired hasn't left the country isn't out of touch and if you've got you know any sort of complaint then uh, you'll have to go through them and this is uh, I mean and, and, and you know just as a side this this goes back to another bugbear of mine which is why the GDC stopped publishing surgery addresses things that you can google you know quite easily um, uh, so now any patient who's got any sort of complaint has to go through the GDC and uh, and can't bring it up with a dentist direct so I said to this guy look if you've got a bona fide beef then the GDC will take it up and then um, and then get in touch with the indemnity society well he said he said, "You know, you know. Of course, he's got a terrible reputation around here. That his reputation in this area is is really, really bad." And I'm like, "Oh, at this point, I'm thinking, all oh, right, okay, yeah, all right, fine." He said, "Yes, yes, yes. I don't know how he can sleep at night uh, with the reputation he's got around here." So, uh, and I'm like, oh, "Okay, fine, fine, all right. That's it. You know, rant on, rant on. He's obviously." And this bloke's not told me who he is. He's not identified himself. I don't know who he is. I mean, presumably some disaffected former patient, you know, which is fair enough. I'm not saying that nobody's got any disaffected former patients. But he uh, he then, uh, you know, and then having got to the end of where, where he, you know, having realised that he's not going to get what he wants and having realised that he's got to the the end of the road with regard to any objective that he might have sought at the outset prior to the phone call in the same way as the guy with toothache they then just decide to be obnoxious you know and and he just you know and he was like he was he was escalating that whole time first of all he starts off by saying that the, the guy's got a bad reputation to see if i'll rise to the bait 
And then he said, uh, um, uh, you know, I don't know how you can sleep at night, you know. And then, and then finally, because I think he knew that, 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 you know, we were like five seconds away from the end of the call. He said, um, he said, well, uh, he said, you know, perhaps he's killed himself. Perhaps he couldn't sleep at night and he's killed himself. And I'm like, well, just, that's, you know, I mean, I, don't, I just, I mean, what do you say to that? This guy, the guy's obviously upset. Here I am again, making excuses for him, okay? The chap is obviously, the chap is obviously uh, a, 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 has a, a limited IQ, let's put it that way. He's, a, he's got a limited IQ and he's expecting me to sympathise with him when he's making all these assertions about someone's entire clinical career being a travesty and uh, expecting me to agree with him, you know, and people who uh, expect their, their coterie to agree with them and then come across someone who says, no, uh, I don't agree with that, then they get cross. And he was getting crosser and crosser because I was just saying to him, look, you know, the GDC will sort it out. They've got all the, you know, that's their job. They've got all the contacts, etc. And, and then, and he finally, uh, termin before hanging up, terminated with the uh, this, you know, uh, hope, this esperance that he's, <laughs> this dentist hopefully had committed suicide from the guilt, from uh, the crimes against humanity that he'd obviously committed against this bloke's implants or whatever so anyway I'll get a phone call uh, not a phone call a letter from the General Dental Council I had um I had some dealings with the gen oh the General Dental Council sent out a questionnaire saying how how are we doing you know uh, what do you think of our performance and so as I do you know routinely on these things because it's my genuine view I give them one out of ten for everything <laughs> one out of ten for everything and uh, and at the end of this thing, they say, uh, do you mind if we give you a phone call, follow up phone call? And so uh, I thought, well, why not? You know, by all means, give me a follow up. And I can give you, I can tell you uh, in words of one syllable, what I think about the General Dental Council, you know, make it clear that I wouldn't, I haven't made a mistake in the survey. So they arranged a, a, a morning to give me a ring and then they sent me an email saying that um, the interviews have been postponed. Which is like, like merely demonstrating that the, the inefficiency and bumbling incompetence of the General Dental Council extends to their, um, to their surveys. So, so there am I, you know, having made, having kept the morning relatively light because I might get a telephone questionnaire at any time, 20 minutes or so. Um, I've, they, they're, they're now, the day before they just say, oh no, oh by the way, yeah, you know, all the opportunity cost of the wasted surgery time, you can just uh, forget that now because we've changed our mind about when we're going to ring you. So, but I got a letter from the GDC about this associate and basically it read something like this. Dear Mr. Watson, uh, we're writing to you because some information has come into our possession about Dentist X. And we're sending this to you because you were um, a former employer of Dentist X, which is not correct because obviously he's an associate, therefore in no way was I his, his employer. So, and the, but the General Dental Council doesn't know this, they can't reckon, they can't distinguish the difference between uh, self-employed subcontractor and, and an employee so that you know you know incredible inc stupendous incompetence and uh, and uh, we felt that you know that you need you should know this information so we have included this information with this letter so I look in the envelope there's nothing in the envelope so they haven't included anything so then I read on the next paragraph um, for reasons of confidentiality, we are unable to tell you what this information is. <laughs> However, should you wish to know what this information is, then you, you can contact Mr X, who may or may not tell you, or uh, if you ask Mr X for his permission, we, we, may, we can tell you, but only if you ask his permission. Um, However, and then, then there's a bit of a blurb about the GDC is the body that does this, that and therefore. 
and uh, and it finally finishes off with saying uh, by the way if you have any information relating to the competency of uh, Mr X that you'd like to share with us can you do it and by the way can you do it quick by the 20th of something or other you know so and this is I mean any totalitarian regime would have been proud of this letter basically it says that Mr so and so is under suspicion we can't tell you why he's under suspicion but if you'd like to contribute anything towards that suspicion then uh, send it to us you know this is this is the sort of appeal that resulted in uh, the discovery of Anne Frank you know this is the sort of appeal that terrorized the East Germans for so long under the Stasi uh, I think it was the Stasi yeah yeah you know where you know everyone was encouraged to report on their neighbors you know have you heard your neighbor say anything funny have you seen your neighbor do anything funny you know if so re re report them to the police um, <clears throat> so I don't know honestly I don't know what to do with this letter I don't I, I, if I had had any concerns about his I mean genuine concerns I'm not just talking about jobs that went wrong I mean genuine concerns about his fitness to practice I would have raised them already wouldn't I I wouldn't you know I mean you're obligated to bring these things to the GDC proactively you're not supposed to wait until they write a letter around saying oh by the way do you know anyone who's uh, who's been, who's negligent in their practice and I already said we parted company not because he was negligent but because he was he wasn't cost-effective he was just doing less work to pay for the repairs that needed to be done And uh, patients were, you know, these patients were very happy with him. But then that's no sign, you know, that's no sign, is it? I mean, that's the trouble. I mean, a lot of the very worst practitioners have patients. I mean, Desmond Demelzo, Demello, whatever his name was, I'm sure his patients were ecstatically happy with him. Um, there's a dentist called um, Q Singer in Whitstable. As far as I know, never did any periodontal treatment in his life and uh, on himself or all his patients and I used to do some emergency cover for him and you know and, and I used to say to people your teeth are all loose and falling out but they didn't but they were still all on Mr Singer's a lovely person he's a lovely person so uh, in the end you just give up you, you know you just criticize the problem rather than the the dentist who's who's uh, you know has possibly supervised it anyway it's weird isn't it I don't you know I don't know um, I don't know this is uh, goes under the heading of uh, don't let the buggers grind you down you know this is the problem at the moment I'm feeling like the buggers are trying to grind me down a bit and uh, they, they're saying is nil carborundum or nil carborundum est which doesn't mean don't let the buggers grind you down I don't think I think it does I know it doesn't but that's the one that everyone uses and it's fairly easy to remember so that's my motto for the day don't let the buggers grind you down and uh, especially not the GDC okay Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.